we're nothing, we're nothing without Kayla. Bam, more live. Is that the cue to yawn? Uh, what this? We're live. Is that the oh. yawn? Tell you how tired I am. Dude, get people excited I, for the show. I have the whole I have the whole schedule for the Rogue Invitation almost. I just don't have one of the shows for Thursday, and I don't have tomorrow's show. I really want to do a Wednesday night show. Are you doing what? Are you doing a show with? Uh, you're doing a show with Spin tomorrow. Yep. Shit. If you want to see John Young tomorrow, you will not be able to see him here. You'll have to go over to the Barbell Spin. Has well, just, when are you doing it? I don't know actually. Do you always do Wednesdays for Spin? Yeah. Every uh, six thirty Central every Wednesday. Dude, this hat is hot. I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about your hat or not, but it's a little suspect for me. <clears throat> I saw um, I got uh, a few days ago when I saw I saw Tyson Bajan wearing these. <laughs> that, it all makes sense. That's now. what it is. What? That's what, what? it is, Ryan. What? what? Uh, when I and when I saw I, you wearing those shirts, this is uh, wearing the shirts. This is <laughs> inner city, inner city Chicago Sevon right there. Uh, Ken Walters, super sticker. What's up, baby? This is usually the shirt I only wear um, if I'm interviewing Avi, but I thought I'd put it on. I was, I was, I should have sent you a question for Tyson this morning, Seva. Oh, what were you thinking? To ask him. It's not uncommon for players in the NFL, especially quarterbacks and running backs, when they have an opportunity to play big minutes for the first time, whether it's you know the starter gets injured in the first quarter, first half, and then they have to come into the game or they get injured in the previous game and then they have their first ever start coming up for them to have decent or actually really good games sometimes. Mm. I mean, he has the best pass percentage in the NFL right now. Passing but, percentage. I mean, only game in a quarter, but still, best but, in the NFL. Yeah. The question I wanted you to ask him was, do you think that that's sustainable? And the reason I would particularly ask is because every person, as he mentioned in the NFL, is elite at what they do. Mm -hmm. That means there's 31 defensive co coordinators that now mm -hmm. have footage on him. And they can go back and prepare if needed for him. Mm -hmm. so the Chargers coach. Footage. It's not completely irrelevant. It's hey, he's going to be on. He's going to be on every Tuesday. What they can be looking, you know. Anyway, it would have been. I would have been curious to see how he uh, would have responded to that uh, this week to say if he's you know nervous about it at all. Oh, just kick John. Hunt. <laughs> Yeah, you got it. You got it. Caleb, what's up, dude? Yeah, we got to ask him that. That's that's great. It's, it's kind of like the fight game you're describing. Okay, listen, we don't have time to dilly dally, people. Listen, I told Brian my plan, and Brian was like, "Hey, dude, you're the weak link." So let's get through this really quick. Here, what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome Katie Gannon back to the show. Have I been gone so long that Savon became Malibu's most wanted and Malibu's most wanted, and John Young is the normal one? Um, listen, uh. Uh, that means I was at already, the already off one track. At some point. Already off track. Listen, um, 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 uh, Caleb, hi. The Heat One app, guys. It is the fantasy fitness, Tyler Watkins fantasy fitness app. It's called Heat One. The website is heatone.com. I don't actually know if that's Just true. Just go on Instagram. Or, yeah, or go on Instagram. Or get the app. The and make sure really you long. go and get the app and download it so you can play the uh, fantasy app, the CrossFit fantasy app, the premier number one CrossFit fantasy app for Rogue this this time, uh, for the Rogue Invitational. There it is, the Heat 1 app. <clears throat> and a bunch of new features on there, and uh, hopefully we can have Tyler on tomorrow to talk about that. Okay, listen, Katie Motter's coming on in 13 minutes. Before Katie comes on, I want to go through every man and every woman and just have you guys tell us something about them. So, Caleb, if you could tell something big, big picture first. Okay, go ahead. Just in case anyone's not familiar with what the Rogue Invitational is. Please. This field consists of 14 of the top 16 men from the CrossFit Games out of hundreds, thousands plus that started, <clears throat> and 13 of the top 19 women from the CrossFit Games. Okay. But that's obviously not 20. Six of the additional athletes come through a qualifier on both the men's and the women's side. I think it's four on the men and five on the women have competed previously at the CrossFit Games as individuals. So these are not the people making it through this qualifier are not uh, random people. They're very good. This is a totally uh, different thing, I think. But anyway, uh, and then the the last oh, yeah, one on the right. women's side is Tia Claire Toomey, who needs a little introduction. So this is a very elite field of established athletes that have proven themselves in competition within the past three or four months. Hey, is this chick going to be there? Shelby Neal? Yeah, she uh, was a replacement for Annie Thor's daughter. 
Holy shit. She's one of my favorite. Look at, I thought I was bringing up the list of athletes who were going to be competing and I didn't. Maybe I should leave this job to Caleb. Okay. That's the big picture from, uh, uh, Mr. Friend. Let's go through these athletes so you guys can think about them a little bit. And, uh, and, 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 and um, uh, Chandler Smith. He's going to be great. Uh, where was he on the podium last year? Give me, give me something. Give me something else. Second place of rogue last year. Uh, Jeffrey Adler. Reigning games champion. Patrick Vellner. Only person in the male side of the field that's won the Rogue Invitational before. Roman Krennikov. Would have been the game's champion. Might have been the game's champion. <laughs> Definitely one of the top three fittest on earth. Uh, Brent Fikowski. First time at Rogue. Dallin Pepper. Also, also first, first time? time? Rogue. Yeah, also first time at Rogue. And, and also two times uh, CrossFit Games team champion. And fifth place at the CrossFit Games amongst the men this year. Probably, probably worth more than the team champion. Uh, Jan Akoski. He got sixth uh, this year in the games without a swimming event. I think this has been that was Jonas' most impressive CrossFit Games year was this year. Uh, has he ever won an event at the games besides swimming? Biking. Okay. A uh, Jay Crouch, a Sevon favorite. He's top ten at the games. Their eighth place. Massive improvement from the previous two years. Excited to talk about him tonight. And uh, mm. pro proven athlete. Switch kind of switch camps, right? Lazar Jukic, three top 10 finishes at the games in the last three years. Zero top 10 finishes at Rogue. Uh, uh, and he's he's won the uh, European semifinals? Twice in a row, and mm -hmm. just won the Madrid uh, championships. Jelly Hosty, the big man. Was 10th at the CrossFit Games and should have gotten Rookie of the Year. Yeah, did we ever find out why he didn't? Mm -hmm. Do we know what happened? Yes, it, uh, it was just uh, they decided to turn an award that used to be the same thing every single time into an award that now has uh, opinion in it, inserted into the decision-making process. So rookie of the year is no longer the best rookie. It's Correct. just, well, yeah, well, well, that's good. Uh, uh, woke fit, woke fit. Uh, Bjorg van Carl Goodmanson. Arguably the most experienced athlete in the field, uh, especially if you couple that with the consistency. Top 10 in the games pretty much every year. Never worse than eighth at Rogue. Who the fuck is Bailey Martin? That's part of his name, by the way. I know who he Bailey is. Bailey Martin. He had the games this last year. I think he got – Well, he didn't win an event, but he got third in the handstand walk, or did he win? Uh, no, I don't think he won any of, of the events. But he and Yellow Host, they both finished higher than the athlete that won the Rookie of the Year this year. Oh, who's the guy who won a crash crucible? Hatfield. Austin Hatfield. Yeah. Austin Bailey, Hatfield. Bailey Martin's just like, uh, uh, an improved version of uh, Austin, uh, of Hatfield, just a yeah, better version of him. Australian Hatfield. That's, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I, just, I, I disagree. Oh, but. shut it, John. <laughs> Will Morad. Will Morad. Will Morad. Uh, Probably man. more experienced than BKG. Will Morad. Well, they qualified for the games in the same year. BKG has made it every single year since. Mills made it like four times. Uh, this must be a typo. Noah Olson. He doesn't compete anymore, does he? <laughs> he got the um, back bill as the 16th fittest on earth this year. And uh, even though he has declared that he's hanging it up as an individual from for as far as the game season is concerned, he's still competing individual in the off season when he gets the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Ortega, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. A uh, photographer extraordinaire. Uh, hey, Zachary Savon. Nipple, <laughs> nice to see you also. Oh, go, go ahead. What? I was just going to mention to Ortega's question that you flipped through there, but oh, oh. while I was listening to you and your new um, BFF this morning, yeah, 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 yeah. I finalized my, um, well, not finalized. I still will wait till after row, but I put the finishing touches on my top 200 men in the world. Oh, and is, well, that, where is that going to be premiering? On Be Friendly Fitness? Maybe someone, unless someone makes me a better offer. Maybe we can do a the collaboration. The answer is yes, Jonathan. The oh. answer is yes. He's going to make the games this year, next year. Uh, Ricky Garrid, Ricky Mack, as they, uh, as he's formerly known now, Ricky Mack, with a slight name name change. Didn't do the games this last year. This is the first competition he's done since uh, he hurt himself. Uh, one of the most exciting uh, people, and we want to see, one of the most anticipated to compete. I would say. I know this has been mostly objective because it's coming from. Um, Mr. Young and uh, Brian, but I'll add that in there. Uh, Victor Smooth Skin Hoffer. Oh, you've touched his skin. I, I've seen it. I've seen oh, it from oh, afar. Oh. <clears throat> well, I'm excited to see Victor. I wish it wasn't this competition. 
Uh, is he screwed because this is a strongman competition and he's a noodly gymnastics boy? <laughs> he don't, he's not. He's stronger than you think. Uh, he's all, he's one of two athletes in the men's side that has not competed at the CrossFit Games. Oh, okay. Uh, good bit. Uh, Travis Mayer, uh, uh, who will be top five at the 2024 CrossFit Games, according to the creator of the Heat One app. But he's never be been competing. top five at Rogue. He's competed there twice before, and he's finished sixth both times. He's never been top five of the games either. <laughs> Tudor, unpredictable. Home run potential. Magda, yeah. yeah. He, uh, would win, he would win the Olympic lifting total against this field. And uh, the only person that I've never heard of, Garrett Clark. Who the fuck is that? John competed against him. Wow. I did. You did? Did you not compete at the fittest experience last year? Yeah. He was a champion. Well, I wasn't around him. So <laughs> we were, we were, we were, in, di- we were in, different, we were in different heats. Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? We're, we're, who is he? Who is he? He's is he any good? He ever been to- he's 16th in semifinals last year. How old is he? Does he have a chance to go to the games? Is he too old? Is he washed up or is he young? It would, I mean, it's, he's in the, he's in a, a range of athletes that you cannot say does not have a chance to go to the games, but, you know, <clears throat> uh, he doesn't have a ton of excellent competitive performances under his belt yet. Okay. Uh, Garrett Clark, uh, an unknown. I'm assuming he came through the qualifier. <clears throat> he did. And the most famous of all the athletes, J A Y S O N. Hopper. He pay Jason you to Hopper. say that? No, no, he would never pay you. He might have asked you nicely. <laughs> uh, Jason Hopper. Uh, I think um, we're going to see something special from Jason. Who's Jason Hopper? He's had a very up and down career since uh, entering the scene three years ago, and absolutely will be looking to uh, to prove something this time around after not finishing where he wanted to at the games this year. I think okay. he was seventh both years at Rogue, though, right? <laughs> both uh, correct, correct. two years he competed, he's very consistently seventh. To the women, Caleb. Uh, one of the most uh, um, uh, training at one of the most prestigious camps, alongside the likes of uh, Mal O'Brien and Matt Fraser. Uh, Laura Horvat, uh, who does not return my texts. <laughs> reigning games champion and reigning rogue champion. Uh, Emma Lawson, <clears throat> uh, second place at the CrossFit Games and is only on the way up. Third place at Rogue last year. Ariel Lowen. Go for it, John. Oh, he's well, fucking I, with you, fittest, John. Fittest American. Mm, mm. Fittest American woman. Uh, fittest works out mother. in her garage. Works mm. out in her garage. And third Lives in Texas. Game. Lives in Texas. Home field advantage. Went to my high school. <laughs> just keep listing accolades at school. Did she I, go to your I, high school? Did she? Yeah, she did. We just, I, I just found that out the other day. I'm friends with a guy who is in her Bible study group. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we just keep, Fuck. Keep, Big keep with it. Wow. Wow. Did you go to college with Dylan too or something? No, no. There's a there's a guy who lives in Midland that uh is one of Coach L's athletes. Are we just gonna we can stay on Lowen? I got my ass kicked by her on a workout two days before the CrossFit games this year. Damn. SC fitness Lawson equals hot. Uh wow. Gabby Magawa, the L is pronounced wa. <laughs> Gabby Magawa. Gabby Magawa is you know, top, one of the top fittest women in Europe the past couple of years, uh, multiple time top 10 at the games, and in my opinion is built for rogue, her skill sets. She's banging Laura Horvath's brother, Christoph. John, do you have anything? Uh, Alex, Alex Gazan. Uh, another up-and-coming person. I think rogue is built for Alex. Um and we'll get into that later, but I think uh, I think Alex Kazan is going to crush this weekend. Somebody that I was not high on and has completely swayed my opinion, and now I'm going to go all in on her. She was fifth place at the games. That's a good good thing to say for now. And as I learn about football, I hear about franchise quarterbacks. Alex Kazan has quickly sort of become the franchise face of the uh, famous, infamous, notorious, prestigious uh, underdog underdogs athletic. Underdog athletic underdogs, plural. What the fuck ah, is that? I mean, you, got, you got Ricky there too. Uh, uh, the face, yeah, but he's in Australia. John, you want to get a you want to get a bet on the on the books early? Just go ahead. I'll take uh, that. Oh no, M- no, no bets right now, seven. All right, we're in cruise. No, no, not yet. No, we got to cruise through and get through this before Katie comes on. Uh, Emma Carey, eighth at the games last year. Um, just switched camps. 
to mayhem. Um, Danielle, the wonderful Brandon. John, ahead, you're killing it on the women. Daniel Brandon, back, back you know, top, multiple time top ten at the games. Always has a home run potential on specific events. COVID survivor. <laughs> Paige Powers, one of the only uh, mayhem athletes who's consistently improved year after year, um, and she hasn't showed any signs of slowing down. Uh, Miss Emily Rolf. Four straight times to the CrossFit Games. Absent the year she had to withdraw. She's inside the top 20 every year. Coming off oh, her best 12th. A vaccine survivor. Uh, Tia Toomey. Tia Toomey. Tia Claire Toomey. She's a mom. She's a mom. <laughs> Anything else? She's Toomey or is how she is uh, going by these days. So feel Tia free to Toomey call her that. Or. Tia Claire Toomey or. or. That's, that's or. too much or. to say. Just no, to I don't mind. Tia. Uh, greatest CrossFitter who ever lived. And on the women's side, for sure. Men's and oh yeah, men's and women. I mean, she's hard to active. say if she's the greatest. You can say she's the most oh. dominant. Okay. I think she, I don't think you can say she's the most dominant. She's got to she, be the I greatest think, at something. Six six wins, I think she's still the in the game. Games competitor. I think yeah. she's the greatest individual games competitor. She's got to be greatest mm. at something. You got to give her some. That doesn't greatest. mean peak fitness. I'll still take Fraser. I think Fraser's the fittest person we've ever seen. Person. But you can't argue six versus five. Okay, so. okay, okay, okay. Uh, welcome, Miss Katie Motter. Hi, how are you? Hey, hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? You get ready. Okay. To, N- NBA season started tonight. Savan, they putting you in the game. What's going on here? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Hey, what's with the guy? What's with the guy with the um the seven foot four guy with the eight foot uh, arm wingspan? He's gonna be really good. I think. He is. Um, uh, tell me something about him. Do you, have you looked at him? Like someone was like, "Hey, that he's." Have not you seen his playing. wingspan? Like you Wimby, should see Wimby how some Yama? of these guys are. Yeah, some of these guys are training to get their shot off. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a rookie, so we'll see. But uh, he's got to prove he, himself for sure. He looks like an alien. <laughs> and he's not playing the position that, that he's supposed to be playing, right? He's he's like in a six foot four man's position. Yeah, he can pretty much play them all. You know, when the monsters like stole the talent in Space Jam, like he looks like one of the monsters. Versus everybody else. How about Tyson? We gotta go come back, come to Tyson first. I start every time with Tyson. That's pretty cool. Crazy. Great job. Cool. Super confident. Uh, I'm really excited for this weekend. Yeah, I had to make a really difficult decision about Sunday. Very, very, very <laughs> which, difficult. Which, very, which, very, which diff- very difficult decision. I'd rather not talk about it right it now. It depends. It depends on if we keep going with this this phone call here. So, um, Katie. Can we change Ricky's name on the rogue scoreboard to Ricky Mac? Uh, Gerard Mac is his middle name, and I just think it would add some uh, pizzazz to him. I would just like to just put that in formally. Maybe if he specifically requested that. Okay. It's, it's, it would not a big deal. It's like something you have. You guys have the technical ability. Yes, yes. Okay. Hey. Um, if you hear that, it's a train. I'm sorry. It goes right by the diamond. <laughs> no, that's a uh, Bill's in bed and he pulls yeah. like a, a, a cord and it makes that sound. Says, and yeah, says, I'm right. out. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, uh, tell me about Shelby Neal. How did she end up at uh, Rogue? Uh, so she was the next person up, obviously, uh, w- you know, with Annie, you know, congrats to Annie. I think it's, it's amazing. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was fair. Um, so we had invited her um, and wanted Annie to announce it to the world and didn't want to say anything. So Shelby has known for a few weeks now. Uh, that she was going to be in. Okay. Okay. Cool. So she had you give her that you tip the hat, but say, "Hey, keep your mouth yep. shut." But okay. And, and why wait? What's the point of waiting in case Annie changes her mind or something? She tries to like pull it off. No, not changing. But obviously, there was twenty one on the on the leaderboard, and, and then there would be more questions. You know, I figured it, it could be a number of things, but we wanted Annie to announce because that that's her story to tell, and uh, really proud of her with the way she's handled everything. And you know, I think uh, Shelby's handled her her spot with grace as well. Yeah, awesome. I'm a huge fan of hers. And um, what about Tia? Can you tell us about how she came in? Was that like, how touch and go was that? Was that last minute? Is she, um, obviously, she deserves to compete and everyone wants to see her compete everywhere she's going to go. How did you guys handle that? I don't know if everyone thinks that, right? I've heard a lot of stories that people don't think she should be here. Everyone thinks she should be there. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> She's had an invite for sure. Uh, it wasn't touch and go. I think if, if she wanted to compete, we wanted her to give that opportunity and really happy she's going to be here. And I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, where she's at uh, right now. And 
I think a lot of people are interested to see see the race, but uh, super happy she's here. And, and when was the deadline that she had to confirm? Was there a date? Uh, it was sometime in September. Okay. And, and, and basically she's just – and did she, did she feel very confident or did it seem like she was unsure or how did she feel about her – Oh, I think she's very. It. I think she's really confident. Yeah. You know, I think she's ready to be here, and I, I think if she wasn't confident, she wouldn't be here. Um, do you feel? Are, are you are you excited about this more so than maybe years past? That I, I think, I think it's probably the greatest, most anticipated competition we've ever had um, in CrossFit in, in any area because we have a champ going against a former champ, and they're both arguably in their prime, but also Tia dealing with what she's dealing with. Um, you know, coming, rebuilding herself or, or do you feel that too? Or are you like, Oh my God, I'm more excited than ever to watch a comp. Uh, I think it's year five. So I think we're excited as a team just because we, you know, we're five years into this thing. We've learned a lot along the way. We've listened to a, a lot of the feedback we've been given about the event, but it's always been about the athletes. If the athletes come out and perform, it's going to be a hell of a show. And so it's our job to make sure that the workouts are, are right. It's a safe place to compete. And it's a, it's a cool opportunity for everybody, but yeah, if the athletes come out here and, and do their job, then everybody's going to be happy. Was it, was it John Young who was saying that maybe he doesn't want to see Tia compete? Was it that guy down there? I've, I've heard there's been a few. John, were you, that. John, did you have an and issue I, with Tia competing? I could not believe it. Yeah, um, that's I want disgusting. someone to say that to me that she shouldn't be here. Yeah, John, should she I not be? I said that she shouldn't compete. I said that I don't think she's going to win. Oh, okay. 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 I don't, I don't remember hearing anyone say she wasn't going to compete either, but. Was it on a different show, Katie? Were you listening to different shows? You no, I think her? I think it was on the show. I really? think or maybe I was show. referencing she should be training. Like that's oh. on her, not like her. <laughs> Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous on no, her. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm saying y'all, you're misinterpreting what, I'm, what I'm trying to say. Uh, Alexander Barry, can't wait for this weekend. Uh, money for the recaps. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um. Uh. When 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 you when you invite these people for it, it, the format is to, in general, is is the broad format just to go down and pick the best people who finish at the games. Can you tell us like what the general that's idea part, is behind that's the part invitational? Of, it's part of the equation, right? So we're, we look at um, top fifteen, top twenty at the games, but we also know that we want to qualify in at least five people from the the queue, um, our qualifier. And then depending on if people decline, then we decide if we go to the queue or if we keep going down the games list. Um, that that guy, Garrett Clark, you ever heard of him before uh, this Rogue Invitational? No, I never heard of him. I, I know a lot honest. more about him now. Yeah, but no, you, but I, I, you know, but that's what's him. cool. That's what's cool about the queue, right? You're not, right. it's not, it's not the games. If you look at Ricky, right? He didn't, he didn't have a chance to go to the games. He now has an opportunity to compete here with, with the top 20. Do you have a favorite that you want to win, like in your head? Like, are you like, it would be nice if that person won? Absolutely not. No, not even between Laura and Tia. <clears throat> of course, I have who I think will win, but I'm not not, not say who that. will win. But I mean, not based on. I mean, just like a favorite, like hey, or who you like, want to win? Yeah. No, I don't. You know, I think um, friends with a lot of these athletes. We sponsor a lot of these athletes. And so I'm not going to go out there and be unfair and, and, and feel that way. I, I, what I want is I want everybody to stay safe and I want it to be a hell of an event. If you, you want everyone, to, I want it to be competitive. And if it comes down to the wire, like that's the most exciting thing for everyone. Uh, let me push back on the safe thing. If you wanted it to be safe, why would you have a deadlift event? Oh, come not, on. A one rep max deadlift. <laughs> these, these guys should not be doing a one rep. Def, de, oh, uh, come on. Like, no, no. Too dangerous. Too dangerous. Stefan, if you want us to push back on that, they've done the CrossFit total at the at the games several times, and that involves a deadlift plus other two, two other lifts in a very in confined the, time window. In the rain. <laughs> uh, was there any concern about the deadlift? Like, oh my God, you're gonna bring these guys? Or they're you're like, man, they're fucking professionals. Like, they're professionals. Yeah. They, they know where their limits are. If they want to test that, that's on them. If they want to hold back, knowing they have more events, you know, uh, to go, then that's on them as well. Are there any surprises like where we think it's going to be a deadlift with the bar and it's going to be a deadlift with a different implement? Study your face, people. Uh, study maybe, your face. Maybe. Study your face. Study we your haven't face. released everything. We haven't released everything. I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> Did she twitch? But it's but it could be. We could be. It's it's similar. That wouldn't just because you say deadlift doesn't mean we know what what it is. Correct. All right. But you guys uh, can talk about all kinds of possibilities. I know that's what's going to happen as soon as I get off of here. Absolutely. I saw you twitch a little bit. Um, the <laughs> The 
so today I purchased my um, premiere package for $25 so I can get the different angles. And then someone said, hey, dude, um, can you send me the link? And I'm like, well, can we do that? Or can we share links? Is that what? No, no. You guys got some security for that? Mm, yep. Oh, don't, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Katie Henniger, uh, um, uh, owner of, of Rogue Fitness. And, and basically, this is your baby, the Invitational too, right? You're the yeah. director of this, this project. And yes. um, uh, I would like to invite you, if you can, uh, with no pressure, to um, get some post shows with you. I'll be bugging you and sending you links at the end of uh, – Every evening, maybe like we, we got evening talks with you on the hill last year. Maybe we could do that again. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to? Uh, do you want to apologize for anything, John? <laughs> no, I'm talking about what's good for Tia and winning the games. Okay, it, fine, fine. I wasn't even talking about you, but it's okay. okay. I mean, sure. look, it's it's. I hope it's going to be a great event. We have some stuff we haven't uh, we haven't put out there yet. Obviously, there's been some weather in the area. We have contingencies throughout the weekend that that we've already been talking about, but. You know, we're really excited. Like you said, the field is stacked. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? Dude, it's it's insane. Uh, Patrick Clark has man. a great suggestion. Uh, Katie, oh, this is a great idea. Uh, uh, Miss Henniger, can you have uh, the Dave Castro demo the deadlift? <laughs> He's pretty good at a deadlift, yeah. yeah. Maybe he'll come out here and do it for us. Uh, you <laughs> are going to have um, – it's very rare for Dave to go to uh, outside events, and he is going to the event, He's right? I think he's going to be here, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, he told me he was. All right. Brian, is there anything you'd like to say to Katie? I'll uh, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right, Katie. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks. We'll be watching closely. Thanks, Katie. See you and, guys. Judging, and judging. Yeah, of course and, you will. And criticizing, yes. Thank you. <laughs> see you. Have fun, guys. Bye. Damn, we're lucky. Jeez, I didn't know you were just putting me on the spot like that. I didn't know she was going to. I didn't know what shit. Grief, I was taking Sarah. her lead. I didn't know she was going to ask pound you either. <laughs> I didn't know, but I was like, fuck, if we're going to pass pound John a little bit. Start doing a lot more barbell spin shows after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is, uh, what is this Malibu's Most Wanted vibe? That's the second one we've gotten. I don't even know that show. It's a movie. Caleb will pull something up for you. Okay. Uh, did we make it through the women's? Mm -mm. No, okay, let's go we back to We were so the... close. We were so okay. close. Okay, let's go back to the women's division. And um, I, th I think we finished it because the last one was Tia on that list. No, we didn't do like Elena Karatawa. Wow, maybe this is wrong. Okay, well, hold on. Hey, I, I that was impressive though. I liked how Caleb, how you pivoted and tried to go to pictures. Yeah, I, I found it and I was like, wow, this is genius. That and that was cool. It's not right. Um, Austin Hartman, uh, Mr. Young is used to the ass poundings, he can handle it. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Will Branstead or yes. Sevon looks like prison, Mike. <laughs> That's the one we were talking about before the show, Will. Oh, Thank you. Before we went live, we made that reference. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miss Karen Freyova. 14th at the games. Um, I believe has a 420 deadlift somewhere around there. Maybe it's 437 or something like that. Uh, she, I think she's going to surprise a lot of people. I think a lot of people don't know her name, and they should know her name because she's been in the game for a while. And I think she's going to – Shock a lot. They better know her name. I've been talking about her since 2019. I know you have. I know you who's, have. Who's better, her or Emma Tall? Her. She's been more consistently good over the years. Emma Emma did beat her this year at the games. Um, but it was, you know, first kind of first time she's beat her on a major stage. So I'd say Karen's better. Uh it does and does Karen have the um Karen, does Karin have the uh best deadlift in the bunch? <laughs> um no there are like four girls with 415 plus she's one of them but i don't do it's be hard to pick yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the deadlift yeah, i mean yeah, it we'll is it is when we get it there when we get there dude i was listening to the the lone ranger podcast today and, and uh lauren cleo has a had better deadlift than i do i mean lauren's pretty strong yeah crazy uh bethany flores bethany flores Made a return to competition this year. Um, really unknown what she can do on the strength side, but she's great at, at the, the monostructural and gymnastics. Terrified of the deadlift. Her and Danielle Brandon, terrified. I heard Annie Thor's daughter's not even pregnant. She just saw a deadlift and pulled out. <laughs> Annie's pretty good at deadlift. She's scared, though. Uh, Paige Semenza. 
great uh anyone who has a podcast invite her on great guest down to earth cool 18th at the games this last year she's been in the game for a while um and she's very consistent i would say she's she's one of the more consistent people that are competing misfit athlete she's cool like shelby neal's cool like you go camping with them cool anything else brian about miss Ms. Semenza? Semenza? That's that's pretty good uh, Shelby Neal. Yeah, last last woman in, uh, 19th at the games. Has some um, really specific good skills in her arsenal, but those skills are usually not programmed that frequently at Rogue. She's, she's going to have a hard time. Uh, and, and Shelby, the year before 2022, was marching straight into the games and then shit the bed in the final workout. Uh, came back the next year, 2023, and uh, made it to the games. It was 19th. It wasn't like she... Um, like she made the final cut. Uh, fun fact, Brian picked her to not be in the games. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Danny Spiegel. She likes to eat. Uh, Mr. Friend. She's uh, she's going to put on a show at least once, probably twice during the weekend. Always a threat to have one or two wins in any competition she goes to, depending on what's uh, program there, <clears throat> probably the strongest, like across the board when it comes to just raw strength in the field. And, uh, you know, for a rogue invitation, it's fun to have her there. And, and prior to the games this year, she was making some statements that she had bigger plans than CrossFit and had bigger things to do than CrossFit and then didn't make it to the games, which seemed like it was very emotional for her. Maybe she had to rethink maybe her verbiage. Uh, Manon Angones. Manon Angones. She was 35th of the games. Um, she has very specific strengths and and weaknesses. She's like like she's not super well balanced. So she has strengths and weaknesses, and it's not evenly across the board. But her strengths are more in the weightlifting realm. So I like I think she'll have a couple workouts where she'll be pretty good at the, at the invitation. She was the top uh, top finishing female out of the invitational qualifiers at Rogue last year, taking 12th. And in, uh, I think in 2022, I don't remember if it was the semifinal or the games, but she refused to attend because of the requirements to get the injection. Like Novak Djokovic stood by her conviction, so she <clears throat> she missed she missed a year. Was that the game she missed because of that? It was the games, I think. Well, that wasn't the reason that she, that she didn't have a chance to make the games that year. But... No, it wasn't. She couldn't travel somewhere. She didn't travel somewhere because of her convictions. That might be true, but that year she she missed the submission deadline because of a time zone change. Ah, that's right. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> Elena Caratala Sanahua. Pretty good prison, Mike. Uh, Elena made the games two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> training one of your... culture, right? Or the training program? The training culture in Spain. And, uh, yeah, she's won some, some big off season competitions in Europe. Um, I think she's still looking to have kind of a breakthrough at the, you know, the games or the rogue level. Oh, prison Mike is from, um, office space. Just the, the office. office. Oh, office. Just the office. Oh. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, who else? Was there one more person on? The oh, thank you. Yeah. Interesting. Lauren Fisher. I was wearing a bandana for a while. I have a blue bandana I was wearing. I just didn't know if that was appropriate for the show. Lauren Fisher. She's known to go full retard in events every now and again. She is. She is. She gives it. She gives it her all. <clears throat> Lauren Fisher, oh. was, you know, she's, she <clears throat> came onto the scene as an individual uh, several years ago. She competed as a team athlete for most of the past few seasons and she's given been giving it a run as an individual. She had a decent semifinal uh, she was inside the top 20 and she, um, you know, may qualify again for this podium at NorCal. So she's doing pretty well for a kind of return to individual season. Longest competitor in the, in the group. Most CrossFit experience. Uh, no, well, no, not in terms of years, but in terms of the first year that she made it until now, she, she might be, uh, uh, Will, uh, Will Brand said, or Sevon creates a story in his head that every athlete he likes got blocked from the country because they didn't get, that's correct, because they didn't get, that is true. I'm that transparent. Jeez Louise. Uh, Christine Kohlenbrander, a fantastic guest from the show. She got um, second, I think, in the Olympic total at the games, uh, only losing out to Laura. 
she is the person i i think she's the person who's going to win the deadlift but it's between her and four other girls she's very very <laughs> very strong uh i know i know i didn't give my but i think she's going to win out of those four girls but I, they're all really close so it's hard to say um yeah. and a future guest of the podcast got to get her on uh miss kyra milligan only only female athlete in the field who doesn't have individual games experience but she was uh was it fifth or seventh place this year with Cross AM Independence? Hey, it, is I think it, it was fifth okay. last year and seventh this year. Is a milligan something in a sport? Like if you don't, a a mulligan. Mulligan. <laughs> oh, 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 what is that? What is, what sport is it? What what right. is it? Baseball? It's, it's golf. Oh. Um, if you have a bad shot, you just take a mulligan, meaning that shot doesn't count. It's not something that's you can really do. Oh, so it's not in pro. It's not in pro sports. It's but prison, like, hey, prison Mike takes a lot of mulligans. No, no, okay, no. all right, yeah. all right, all right, mulligan. Thank you. I'm going to keep calling you that till you take that stupid hat off. Thank you. Well, it's going to be a great show then. <laughs> Tank Reeves. Canada, $5. Black pill break. No problem. Thank you. SV40. You guys know what SV40 is? Tank Reeves is a big uh, Disney fan. <laughs> Huge. Uh, do, you know what S- <laughs> do you guys know what SV40 is? If you mm-hmm. don't look it up, it's nuts. It's, it's, you, you can't even believe it. But the first thing it comes up is the National Institute of Health. If you Google it, SV40 hits mainstream America bases, attacks in Syria. Trump confuses V. V. Orban and Turkey press. Putin has 1,000th fake heart attack. Did Putin have a heart attack? Is that true? I don't know. Caleb? Mm. All of those comments are outside of my areas of expertise. You got to look up SV40. It's crazy. Can you believe Tyson Bajan was on the show this morning? Technically, the backwards had his date, Mike. This isn't a backwards hat. This is a um a do like a, a Amazon. I looked up do rag in Amazon and I put it on. Okay. Well, Got then, these. Then, it, then it's prison mic is the, is the better one. Then. No, it's not better. What are you talking about? It's different. Um. Oh, hey. Just so you know, my kids wore Kangol hats for the first three years of their life. So many. I have. I own that hat too. Actually, I actually own that hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do we, do we want to start with the boys or the girls? I say we start with the boys. I feel bad because I'm so excited about the women, but the boys are like, if the, if it wasn't, if Lauren Tia weren't there, I, I would be losing my mind over the boys. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm going to the Chargers game on Saturday. Are you Saturday? really? Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. No, Chargers. you're not. Chargers Bears on Sunday. Yeah, I am. You going to buy a Bajan jersey? And get, I'm gonna sit next to. Oh, I'm, I'm buying all that shit. Sitting in a box, fifty yard line. Oh, he does good. Hang out, get a cleat. Okay. Um, I don't know who's gonna run the show. Uh, Sunday, Sue's, I guess. All right. Um, let's go with. Let's do the boys. Wow. Okay, these ladies and gentlemen, Brian Friend, John Young. Do you want to pull up your story real quick first, Brian? Do we want the to two about <laughs> very best at the CrossFit analytics game. Very different styles. Very different styles. One human, one subhuman. <laughs> Going head to head here. We're going to have to do a post show and have you guys back on and just like see who's the best. Uh, let, can we start at the – oh, yeah, I don't care. Do you want to start at the top or the bottom? Doesn't, I guess let's start at the top. Let's just go in big. Wow, this doesn't even make sense. John Young, Patrick Vellner. What's your argument for Patrick Vellner? Why do you think Patrick Vellner is going to win the 2023 Rogue Invitational? I'm having Pat. I'm going to invite Pat on just because you have that. So <laughs> I, I know I said I was never going to be on the Vellner train ever again. After, but you are. Wow. After picking him for the games this last year. But whenever the one rep max deadlift came out, like, and whenever the events came out, there is nothing that Patrick Bellner is going to be bad at. So his worst event is going to be his first event, ironically enough, and it's going to be a ruck run. Every single other event Pat is going to be good at. I imagine the dual three will have legless rope climbs of some sort. How do you know they, that it's going to be a ruck run? Because it's sponsored by Go Ruck. It's going to be a run of John, something. So is the dual three. Okay, well, it's going to be a run of something, is it not? It could, it could be. It has been historically. But we're, we're, what, what day and what event are you guys talking on about? On Thursday. On Thursday? They, how many events have not been announced? Three. 
Okay, there's something else I should tell you guys, and and Caleb's going to show you this. They made their list. They ranked their guys who they think's going to win, right, in the order. And then that was before the workouts came out. And then the workouts came out, and John changed all of his rankings. Brian did not change his rankings. Brian had could change his rankings if he wanted to, but he chose not to. Brian, did you think it was like cheating to change your rankings? <clears throat> no, but I just can't believe what John just said. There was a, there was a ruck run as the first workout in 2019 and 2021 at the Rogue Invitational. Velner finished first in 2021 on that. That's a and, different field. And, and second in 2019. And, and, and listen, he was he was a better runner back then. Like a uh, Jeff Adler, Roman, like a lot of people have shown to be better runners than him, and they were. Yeah, everyone there. is listening. Mark this argument down right now, and we're going to use it against John on several different occasions later on in the show. All right, mark it. Do it. First but off, the field. We're talk this, about this. What is definitely true is what John is saying is definitely true. Is this is a, an exceptionally deep field at the Rogue Invitational, and there are athletes that have the potential to finish in the top ten of the CrossFit Games that have little to no chance to finish in the top ten in this field. Uh, Constance Fitness, a Vellner winning the whole thing is delusional. Show Wake me up, sir. That he's She's so polite. Right Wake up, sir. Let's say th let's do this, Jeff. What place did you have Vellner in prior to seeing those workouts announced Fourth. yesterday? Fourth place, and you moved him all the way up to first based on one event. No, all of them. There is not an event there's that nothing, I think. There's I think nothing he's about the rest of these. But there's nothing about any of the other events that were announced besides the deadlift that we could not have already projected about Rogue. Correct, correct. Again. But but listen, I'm th I'm thinking about what is Jeff what is Jeff good at, and I and Roman's in this too. And first off, first off, I still kind of think Jeff is going to win, but I do think it's close. And if it's close, if it's close enough, I don't think there's anything Belner's bad at here. Nothing, not one thing. I so hold on, let me let me interpret hold something. Hold on, let me say something real quick here, John, because you have Velner first, Adler second. Brian is Adler first, Velner second. But what I'm really so then you guys really shouldn't be arguing this much. But what I think Brian's really tripping on is the fact that you had him go from fourth to first, and he and he and he wants to respect you as an analyst, but he thinks you've shit the bed and lost your mind because there's nothing that should. No, have made what I think that is much. that what I think, and I don't think John's unique in this regard. I think that many people saw that one rep max deadlift and had a lot of different and had a lot of thoughts that were like, "Wow, that could really change things." But what we see here, and Katie alluded to this. Six of the nine scored events have been announced. So there's, they have listed nine. Six of them have been announced. Most of those have uh, missing information. So when John says that, that Vellner is good at everything that's on this list, we could scroll to, for example, um, what's the workout that has the ring muscle-ups in it? The 10th inning, I think it's called? Yeah, 10 rounds, four ring <laughs> muscle-ups, eight handstand push-ups. He's not a handstand push-up guy. He's gotten hurt in handstand push-ups before. Luckily, that's in an event with four ring muscle-ups and 12 power snatches. He might be the best at He's gonna win that. snatches. Okay, you say that. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Stefan, you say it. that. Maybe Chandler or him, it. yeah. What He's good enough. He's good at handstand push-ups. He's good at handstand push-ups. No, Jeff Adler. Yeah, Jeff Adler. Jeff Adler's going to win this workout. The four-ring muscle-ups is a wash for most of the men's field. That is four-ring muscle-ups with that much uh, rest in between. Every athlete is doing that unbroken. That's Vellner's best movement in this workout, and it's negated by the nature of the workout. The handstand push-up is the mystery here. Rogue has never programmed a kipping handstand push-up, most likely because of the volume, 80. This is just a strict handstand push-up to the ground. That's the crux of the workout for, for Veltner. And that's hey, the reason goes, why he won't win this workout when he usually does win the ring muscle up workout. Yeah. I, hey, I let me say this real quick too. If those are just regular handstand push ups, Ricky's going to destroy this too. Destroy well, you know, we've just named three people who have the chance to beat Veltner at a workout that mm. concludes a movement that he's usually the best in the world at. So I, the, think the the programming, I think of it the opposite. I think handstand push ups is a workout that he can get hurt in where he can finish middle of the pack. And he's not going to because it's good two things that he's very good at. So normally where Jeff would make up ground or Jeff would be better than Belner, he's either – they're going to be really close within two this spots. about these grapes tonight, so. Okay. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just throw this out here too that while we're um, – Noah's going to murder event four. Here's why I think if it was five rounds, Noah might murder it, but not ten. Noah's going to be very good at this event. <clears throat> the, I mean, look, there, there are a lot of – this event is actually going to be super, uh, super fun to watch for the last heat. There are several men, well, depending on who's in it at that time. But like, this is a great workout for BKG. This is a great workout for Yonikoski. This is a great workout for Noah Olson. Um, 
and yeah, there's there's a lot of rounds, but uh, you know these guys move that barbell very well. No question, the Velner is a good workout for Velner. But I don't. But if you're thinking about the Rogue Invitational and you're you're evaluating Pat Velner, you're expecting a high density of ring muscle up workout. I'm saying this is about the worst version of that workout that could come up for Velner, and that it's a reason why after seeing the program, you would not move him up three spots on your rankings, but you would keep, probably keep him the same. It, neg- it might negate the greatness on the deadlift. Is it not the best version of a handstand push-up workout he could ask for, though? We don't know. Let me add this in there, too. It doesn't too, matter what the this... handstand push-up It doesn't Hold matter on, John, what the handstand add... push-up is. Let me put some context here, too. Mel brings up a good point. She's done the math. 80 handstand push-ups and 120 snatches. So for people who think that, that those are small numbers, when Mel does the math for us, she says, good grief. And it, it, it is, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot at the end of the day. All right. Uh, so, so you guys are, are pretty happy with your one and two. You guys, that that's as close as you can get. You let me ask you this, Brian. You think it's going to be close between Jeff and uh, Jeffrey and Patrick? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I don't think that there's a guarantee that either one of them wins either. I just think that no. they have the best chance to win. That I would say in order, Adler and then Velner have the best chance to win the Rogue Invitational this year. But the next three guys there are also athletes that I do not think that you can ignore. I think the top three, any of the top three can win. And then I don't think Chandler or Ricky can win. I think any of the top three can win. It's hard to. <clears throat> I do think that Ricky and Chandler have a chance to podium. I do too. Beat one I, 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 I did too. I did too, but be, not I, win. How do you guys, why do you guys have Ricky so low because of his injury? Well, for I mean, you know, quite, just to be, to be uh, you know, quite frank, you do have to factor in things like that. Roman Krennikov broke his foot at the CrossFit Games. Is mm. he 100%? Can he run? Can he jump onto a 42-inch box multiple times comfortably? Can he go up that hill? Can he lunge? If he has, Well, we, we see he has to lunge. There's a lot of things that put a stress and demand on that foot that have, in fact, shown up here in the competition, and we don't know the, how healthy it is. It's the same situation that we're going to talk about with Tia. We will assume that anyone who's signing up for this is making a responsible decision as an athlete and that they believe that they can go there and compete without concern for their injury. But we also have these pieces of information that Roman had broken his foot, that Ricky had broken his shoulder. And so there's an element of unknown for those guys. Whereas as far as we're concerned, Jeff and Pat are coming off healthy seasons and are coming in without those question marks looming over them. Uh, Katie Gannon, Brian with the asterisks. Those are the online qualifiers. (laughs) No, she's just talking about how you go. I can't guarantee they're going to win. I think that's what you're talking. She was right. No, there's asterisks on my list. They identify oh. the athletes who made it through the rogue qualifier. Oh, and oh, oh, okay. I, to, to, let me, to finish the top three argument, then we can go on. Um, I agree with you. I, I think Adler probably will win. I think he should win. But I do think it's very, very close. And just be, so it's close, I want Belner to win. So I'm putting – and I think since when it's close, I'm going to root for my guy, and I'm always going to put that guy first. That way, if I'm right, I I can celebrate it, and then it's way way more than if I'm right and the guy that I wanted to win doesn't. Katie Does Gannon, sense? um, the yellow is uh, strictly missionary position guys, and the orange is uh, reverse cowgirl. For the uh, if you're wondering what the color code is, and there's the actual key. Oh right, okay. There's the actual key. Sorry. <laughs> um. The, all I mean, the yellow ones means John was high when he made them. The orange ones when Brian was high. Hey, Heidi told me I was high when she saw my picks today for the women. <laughs> Heidi Krum. I don't get what that means, John is higher. Meaning you're higher on John's list and then orange is no, no, higher. Scroll, on. scroll back over. Okay. So there's uh, the athletes that are highlighted in yellow. John has them sing, uh, what I deem to be significantly higher on his list than I had on mine. Meaning that they, because it's a fairly small field. So I said if there were at least two athletes between. So you can see I have Dallin Pepper sixth. He has him ninth. That's two between. So that means I'm higher on Pepper than he is. Mayor, so tell me, he why has... is Ricky so low? Fourth isn't that low. Why is he? Why isn't he top three? Is it? Is it the shoulder? It's I mean, a combination, it's a combination frank, of things. Even if he was coming off a perfect season and he won the CrossFit Games, like the, the Rogue Rogue is Invitational not the is not the CrossFit Games, and we're going to mention that several times. But it's like it's a totally different style of testing, and there, you know, we, there were some so some of the athletes were like, "Damn, like dude, we're getting ranked here lower than we finished at the CrossFit Games." I already ha- have said it. There will be athletes who had finished in the top ten at the games that have no chance to finish in the top ten in this competition, and it's not because they've gotten less fit. It's a different style of competition. Um, did you guys pick winners for events yet? 
I have I have in the Heat One app. I, I remember I told you that I do that slow, long, ninety minute plug for Heat One app. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's same. The, yeah. Um, well, who's going to win the deadlift event? <clears throat> well, the de- if you want to talk about the deadlift event, it's going to be on on Saturday night. And if you think about last year's uh, Saturday night, that was the one right max clean and jerk. And Jeff Adler is one of the best in the world at the clean and jerk, right? John? Yeah. How did he do on the one right max clean and jerk on uh, Saturday night last year? At the – It's about? 15th. For the log? Yeah, because they weren't doing a it's traditional. A they weren't doing a traditional clean and jerk. Exactly. What if this is not a traditional deadlift? We don't know anything about this workout. One rep max deadlift. You think that on a Saturday night and the diamond nightcap under the lights that well, they're just going to roll out a barbell and have you do a one rep max deadlift? I mean, I if they did an elephant different. bar and then they just kept going up until you couldn't pick it up, I think it'd be pretty sweet. Just one. I think that there's. I think it's highly likely that there will be something probably strongman related that is testing the deadlift in a way that's unconventional, and it'll be really cool to watch. But it also has the potential for all those people that are so drawn to this one event and saying how it's going to skew things on the leaderboard. It might introduce an element of unknown that causes athletes who would traditionally be great at a lift on paper to not maybe have such a great performance relative to what we usually would see from them. But to answer your question, Chandler Smith. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is it? I feel like Brian likes to dance around all these questions and just throw up. But we have to give a context. If you want to talk about. Yeah. And once we get that information, we can talk about it. But like, if it's just a one rep max deadlift, elephant bar, like Strongman does, Strongman does a regular deadlift whenever they test this. They just keep going up weights until you can't do it. They don't, it's not a funky implement. Um, And if that's the case, then Chandler Smith would be my pick to win. Caleb, text me your uh, address at some point um, soon. I'm going to send you a package of these hats. We need it. (laughs) Okay, go back to the list, please. Uh, um, Let's go down and um, and, and, and scroll down a little bit um, before we cruise over to the uh, women. We got some stuff to do at the bottom. Let me see the bottom of the list. Let me see if there's any like, oh, you guys are dickheads. <clears throat> Garrett Maybe Clark. Talk the, about Travis Mayer. Uh, Garrett Clark, the unknown, Tudor Magda, Victor Hoffer. What about Tudor's deadlift? Can Tudor win the deadlift? I genuinely have no idea what Tudor's deadlift is. Oh, and, I, and what about Jelly strong. Hosta? Why is he so low? He's just too big of a man. He's like the that Wembley guy from the NBA. It's just too like <laughs> you need to be, you need to be a brick shit house to win rogue. And if not, if he's just too long. I think that I think I mean Yellow Hoste has some really specific skills that he can not just excel at but win or place top three in workouts. If there's any opportunity for a horizontal displacement of a load, the more odd the load, the better. He's going to have a good performance most likely. Any the longer the distance running is going to be better for him. Uh, you know, I'm I'm curious to see um, how he does on a couple of horizontal things. displacement load, picking a load off the ground, moving it that way, carrying something. Okay. horizontally not vertically okay oh oh oh, oh okay okay <laughs> so like you think about like uh you know uh if like um at the games he did phenomenally well on the uh inappropriately named muscle up workout it should have been a sandbag workout and uh he, he just you know he he was moving those sandbags so easily and it was taxing him a lot less than than the other athletes and you know so he's able to mitigate whatever advantage they had on the muscle ups I even have spoken with some of the athletes who who were up there and they were like surprised to see how well he was doing on that. But uh, sled pull, sled push, sandbag carry, Jerry can carry, uh, you know, anything where he's got to move weight laterally or forward and backwards is going to be a, a good thing for him. Machines is good for him. Uh, some of the, some of the uh, upper body pulling can be good for him, but he'll have some problems as well. Uh, young J.R. Howell. Um, uh, Mr. Young, could you please uh, lower your voice a little bit? I, I didn't think it was loud, John, just so you know. Okay, that's my bad. Uh, no, it's fine. I don't, I'm just, I don't know. It's good. Uh, Will Murad uh, down there at 17th. Um, do you think he'll have an event win? Uh, Maybe with the handstand push-ups are, he could win that event. If it's a harder version of a handstand push-up. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, uh, you know, Will's competed at the Rogue Invitation before. He's an incredible athlete. I think that he really um, 
should, deserves a ton of credit for what he's been able to achieve over a long period of time in the sport. He's, but the, the two other times that he competed in 2020 was online and he finished third to last. And then uh, 2021, there were two withdraws. And other than that, he beat four guys in the field. So he's only beaten six total men um, in his two years competing at Rogue. So as good as he is, and even though the, there is the chance that he could have one or two highlight performances, he's probably going to be taking bottom third finishes on most of these. And that's just a, the fact that he's going against the best in the world. Sarah Cox, thank you. CA peptides. Use code Sevon. Get your shipping free. Right? Get your phone up there. To, uh, up there, you know. Put it right over Brian's face. Oh no! Put it right over my face. <laughs> Guess who I'm going to the uh, Chicago Bears game with? Who? Give you one guess. One guess. Sarah Cox. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No way. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just chilling in the box. Free alcohol. At least we'll be able to watch it this time. Travis is going to be there with us. It's going to be so Greg Glassman. Yeah, him too. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a party. Sarah's bodyguard will be there. Nice. It's nice. Is that Travis? Uh no, Travis will be there though too. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so tickled. I think um, Travis is a good somewhere. bodyguard. Yeah, he was. He, yeah, he was great body. He used to be a bodyguard. He's great bodyguard. He's the one I told you carried that U.S. Marshal out of a uh, uh, Andy Andy Stump and Dave Castro were gonna get in a fight with that U.S. Marshal one time at a party in Texas at a Texas bar house. And Travis got in between them and grabbed him and the the marshal and carried him outside. It was crazy. I, ca- I carried a man today. Did but you read he, that? Oh yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, this guy blew out his ankle playing disc golf. I carried him back to his car. Was his name John Young? No. no. <laughs> but he told me he weighed 250 pounds. Was he obese? I mean. How tall was he? I'll decide. How tall six, was he? Six, six foot, six one. All right. That's good. Uh, what about the Chargers super fan? Is that Patrick Clark? Is he a Chargers super fan? Uh, no. I don't oh. think. I think he's talking about someone. That uh, post that you made about the football announcers talking about Tyson was yeah amazing. Thank you. What a douche nozzle. He mispronounced that guy is. his name, said Taylor Bajant. Hey, can I feel like I should put the peptide sticker up the whole show? Can I oh, what if I put it over on this side? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see, I gotta make eye contact with Sarah this week. So I want to like make sure I do my part, represent the brand. CAPeptides.com. That's probably why I'm wearing this do rag and this uh, tank top. Too much peptides. <clears throat> Travis Mayer, seventh place. Uh, uh, another one. You guys are putting him down there because is it? Well, John's got him seventh. I have him tenth. So it's is, a, it, is it know. because um, uh, he's been gone for a year and you just don't know what you're dealing with? Uh, or you think he's I'll old? Talk, I'll, or, I'll, or I'll, I'll, I'll address it good. first. Okay. I'll address it first since I have okay. him lower because I think it re- really what this the rankings here. I mean, we already mentioned that Travis Mayer has competed at the Rogue Invitational twice. He's finished sixth both times. Jason Hopper has competed at the Rogue Invitational twice. He's competed finished seventh both times. The problem is that if you look at these rankings and you look at every single person that's ahead of them on the rankings, other than Dallin Pepper and Brent Fikowski, who have never competed at Rogue, all of the other guys always have finishes that good or better also. And you're inserting two two men into the equation, one who's coming off a of fourth and one who's coming out of a fifth place at the CrossFit Games, both of whom have you know, the potential to upset some of these rankings within the top 10 to a certain degree. And suddenly you're just left with a problem where there's going to be athletes competing at Rogue this year on the men's side who might, have, who might be as fit as they've ever been. They might have a perfect performance there this weekend, and they still might yield the worst result they've ever had at the Rogue Invitational because the field is too deep. I hear you. I just can't see Dallin Pepper beating Travis Mayer. I'm just having trouble like look, getting my head wrapped around that. He what was he had the oh, the best finish in the games between the two by a lot. Dallin and Travis. Yeah. No, compared to compared to Travis's best finish ever in his career. I mean, look, Dallin Pepper beat everyone at the CrossFit Games this year except for Adler, Velner, Krenikov, and Fikowski. Damn. And John, you never you thought he would never win the games, right? Dallin. Yeah. I don't think he'll ever win the games. I think he does. Boy, this is going to be exciting. Uh, who's the who's the dark horse here? Who's in the bottom ten? <clears throat> who 
when he when he's in the top five, you're like, yeah, man. It's like that's a I don't think any of them can go to the top five. I think Noah Olsen is the biggest dark horse. I know that's well you've here's a- well here's the thing is you've got Noah ranked pretty you know pretty highly. So it's you, you know it's I wouldn't uh, I would say relative to where I have him picked, it would be a dark horse pick. But where John has him picked is appropriate based on Noah's previous performances at Rogue. He's finished, I think third one year, maybe that was the online year, and like ninth another year. So I have, again, projected him lower than he's ever been, mostly as a result of the fact that the field is better than I think it's ever been. If Noah finishes top five, I bet you he goes individual next year at the Games. The athlete that's really that I'm really curious about on this list is Lazar Jukic of the bottom 10 guys. The, mm-hmm. main, the, the main reason being, this the Rogue. If, um, I wrote an article last Friday that basically, before I knew any of the workouts, I projected what I thought would be programmed at Rogue based on the pre- past four years. And they've pretty much been true to form. They have, you know, the snatching is always for reps. They always have re-muscle ups. Their handstand pushups are always strict, which we don't know that yet, but we're assuming that's the case. They never have handstand walking. They always have a sandbag. They always have a ruck. You know, it's like echo bike. You know, you can you can see a lot of patterns over the years. And it's really bad when you compare what they program every year compared to what Lazar Jukic is really good at. <laughs> and uh, however, I saw I spoke to Lazar when I was in Madrid. He told me back then that he had had the plan to come over here in the beginning of October and train for the entire run up to Rogue weeks, three, more time than he comes over to prepare for the CrossFit Games alongside Roman because he wants to prove to people that he can overcome the Rogue programming and that he's still good enough to finish better there than he's ever finished before. So we'll see what ends up happening, but he has made a commitment in terms of his life to come over here beginning of October and spend an entire month training along one of the best in the world and I've talked to him since, and he's he's really happy with that decision. He thinks that he's learned things from training with Roman that even in all the years that he's trained previously, he hadn't been able to account for. Um, I know he's excited to go there and prove that, you know, last year he hurt himself, but the year before that he had finished 12th on a perfectly healthy. And he's he's out to prove that that was, uh, that he can do a lot better than that. So we'll see. What's a lot better than that? Like <clears> where, <throat> where would you think he would be satisfied? He would be satisfied. I would say... If I, I think that at a minimum, he would expect to be inside the top 10. I think that he believes that he could finish fifth or sixth. I think so, too. I think he can finish. I think he he really believes in himself, I think. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Who's, whose careers are waning in this group? Is, is Noah waning? Is Will Morad waning? Is Will Morad re, reinserting? Is Bjorgren Carl Goodmanson waning? Who's waning? Is this a telltale moment Dude, for Jason it's, Hopper? It's, I mean, it's crazy. I, like, honestly, the answer is nobody. Okay. Um, if you think about the older guys I mean, who are traditionally go next year, are you going to consider that waning? What do you mean waning? Getting worse? Yeah. Well, who, 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 who could just is like, they just aren't what they used to be. I, I agree with Brian. Then I don't think anybody's like that. Yeah, it's 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 really crazy. I mean, I remember sitting here in, in 2021 saying this is Belner and Fikowski's last chance to win the games. And we're th- sitting here, you know, two, three seasons later, and we're still talking about him having a chance to podium, contend for wins at the biggest competitions in the world. BKG would have had another top 10 finish at the game this year, if not if you, if not for being injured. Will Morad is doing as well as he's ever done in his <clears throat> career at, the, at an older age. Noel Olsen, yet he had uh, one of his tie for his worst finish at the CrossFit Games this year. So you could potentially say that Noah is uh, on the quote unquote decline, but he's always rebounded from any, like he has these up and down kind of performances at the games. Travis Mayer, yeah, he, didn't, he had an injury, didn't compete in the season. He came back to Madrid and he came within two kilos of beating two guys who finished sixth and ninth at the CrossFit games. Like every one of the guys that's over 30 is still, com- is still competing at a high level. That's comparable to what they've always done. It's really impressive. God, I'm not buying it. Let me tell let me, let me tell you who I think's waning. Ready? Can you start at the top? I want to tell you. There, I'm, there's no homeostasis. Okay, here's who's here's who's waning. Uh, um, Velner, Krenikov, Ricky, Chandler, Fakowski, Jorgen, Carl Goodmanson, Travis Mayer, Janikowski, Noah Olson. I'm, I'm just gonna wait. Will Morad. All those dudes are just getting worse. All those dudes are like like. Like like next year's there's gonna be a parade of retirement parties here soon. It's gonna Yonikoski like Yonikowski just had his best game finish ever, and there was not swimming in the games. Fair, okay, good, great point. 
black and white pictures everywhere. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> Is that retirement party shit? That's retirement. Uh, Jake, Jake, what? What, Jake? Talk to me, Jake. Talk to me. Jesus, Jake. Uh, so, so okay, Yannikoski, okay, we'll take him off the list. Fair enough, Yannikoski, okay. How about the rest of the guys? Well, Noah's going team, uh, so yes. he says. Okay, so that's fair. So, I mean, Black and white wanna, picture. If you want to say he's waning, I mean, I don't think he's any worse than he's ever, than peak Noah. Okay. But, uh, I'm not taking him off the list. Yannikoski, though, you got me. Yannikoski, okay, he's getting better. Who else? I'm kind of you... with you on BKG. BKG, just hey, I want to say maybe Vellner's physically capable. I want to say mentally though, he's 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 ready to just fucking hang his hat. I don't up. I don't think Vellner is waning at all. How I about Fikowski? How about Fikowski? How about Fikowski? I kind of feel the same about him. I don't think he's waning at all. I think he's just okay. staying the same. I don't right. I don't think he's I don't improving. think you can no, say that. They, they both dude. <laughs> Two years ago, Valner was sixth at the games. This year, he was second. Two years right. ago, Fikowski was sixteenth at the games. This year, he was fourth. It's like how about, how about Ricky not Mack? Worse. How about Ricky They've Mack? Had, like up, yeah, yeah. How about Ricky Mack? I think he's waning too. What do you think? <laughs> I think he's on his. He's ascending. He's ascending. All right. Okay. Great. Shit. You guys are good for the sport. What can I say? I think the three fittest men in the world are Adler, Roman, and Ricky. Valner's going to win Rogue Invitational. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here uh, tomorrow. We'll, we'll process this and we'll be back tomorrow night with more men's. But now, what we've all been waiting for. Jesus Christ. Have you looked at John's picks yet? No. Yeah, there's there's, there's going to be one that's pretty rough. You want to start at the bottom? I don't want to hear any. Well, it could be. It, it's just a pick. It's, it's stand by your shit. No, no, I will. I'm just telling you. I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with me. I want rock when happens, hard. When it happens, you heard it rock. here first. Rock hard. Hey, okay. Hey, hey, keep the voice down, John. Just some rock. Yeah, yeah. There's people requests in the chat. Someone you want the bottom or the top? Uh, let's go with it. Let's start at the top. I like it. And here's the thing. I think those guys who are waning can still win just because the field just they, they don't make them like they used to. I'm gonna just leave that. Wow. Sit there. Wow. Oh, I like these lists. Oh, shit. I like these. Holy shit, John. <laughs> Do you hate moms or what? <laughs> Holy shit. There's going to be a protest at the Capitol tonight. Liberate the moms. John Young, Brian Friend, both agree that your 2023 CrossFit Games champion, Laura Horvat, will be putting on a clinic at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Uh, what do you think she does? What do you think she does here? You think it's it's all top five finishes for her? No. Uh, no. Handstand push up one. She will not be top five. Last year, last year at Rogue, she had four finishes outside the top five. She was, uh, those were ninth, fourteenth, nineteenth, and seventh. What did she take there? The other finishes were first, 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 second, third. And what did she take at the Rogue? Did she win last year? First. Oh. Yeah. Who took Wait. second? Annie last Torso. Year. Who took third? Emma Lawson. Emma Lawson. Who took fourth? Ellie Turner. Two of those wow. are not in the field this year. Wow. What did Ariel Lowen take last year? Tenth. And people think I'm crazy for picking her seventh. Wow. Man, it's hard to vote against her. It's hard. It's hard to. It's the hard. Rogue she took is not the games. Where did she shit the bed last year at um at uh, Rogue? Lowen's <clears throat> Lowen had a third place uh, last year on the ski bar. That year, this year, it's paired with the heavy back squat, which she was twelfth on. She had basically middle of the pack finishes: 11, 12, 11, 10, 15, 13, 9, 6, 9, and the third. So she's you know, ain't no way. The Ivana Trump ain't no way the fittest woman to ever exist on planet Earth is going to come. Fourth. Well, tell me, tell happens, me, tell me, tell me, first. tell well, me, Brian, tell me, Brian. Why does he have her at fourth? Do you think he's crazy, or, or are you feeling him? You just John, like, hey, where man. did you have her before the workouts came out? Mm, I think third. Did you ever? Th you, yeah, you I definitely, had third. you I definitely had, had it either second or third. Yeah. I had a third because we weren't matching on the top two. Dude, I went to the gym. 
I was at the gym. The workouts got announced. I come back home. I'm talking to JR. I pull up the, the rankings to look at something, and John's are just blank. He's just deleted them all. I didn't oh, even have a chance okay. to like. <laughs> John, who made the biggest who made the biggest transition? Alex Kazan. She went from what? She uh fourth to third i guess not but but that's a big but but putting alex I over to putting I alex you. over to was is the biggest thing i had emma lawson being tia already um how many points did laura win the games by uh let's find out she won the games by 47 points and then who took second lawson okay okay in 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 um is is law is Lawson um rogue ready? Is she a, is she a rogue invitational so, athlete? Seven. She was yeah. sixth her rookie year, and then she got third at Rogue. That that same like the next you know within four months, however long the games is to Rogue. Okay. Right? And then she was second this year. She was already third last year, and then the second place woman is not doing it, right? And she's yeah. only gotten better. She went from sixth to second, and it was. You know, kind of a convincing second. Like she wasn't really ever in danger of not being second. Yeah. The margin between her and Laura was slightly greater than the margin between her and Ariel Lowen. It's 37 points. What did Daniel Brandon get last year at Rogue? I know she had that. She was not. Uh, she was ninth. She, was she did okay. So, but she was injured. Uh, well, she got, you know, last on that uh, back squatting workout. But that was because she wasn't injured at Rogue. She was just was unable to squat heavy for the whole year. So you guys, so you guys have her doing worse, even though she's going to come in better shape. Well, yeah, but I think that again, I just I think these fields are as strong as we've ever seen at Rogue. Uh, okay. Um. Do you have a problem with John Young having her in fourth? Uh, Tia Half Claire of the women's field are first timers at Rogue, so there's a lot of big, you know, un unknowns in that regard. Uh, do I have a problem with Tia at fourth? Yeah, Miss Ur, uh, Ur, Ur. Look, T I mean, look, Tia could show up here and just obliterate everyone. Like we have really have no idea. It's it's the the. From what I understand, I think that um, from you, what you reiterated that she had said when she went on with um, Sean and Lauren is that she's looking to prove what's what is possible, and she's yeah. looking to to redefine that in terms of coming back from a pregnancy. We have seen women come back and compete. After pregnancies, 9, 10, 12, 15 months and do exceptionally well, just as good as they were before or better. Five and a half months yet to be seen. So it's it's massively unknown. I agree with Katie, though. Uh, if Tia is confident enough to sign up for this, then I think that she's coming there with the intention to compete at full capacity and the belief that she can win. I, the only reason I didn't pick her to win is because I think that there is an element of unknown. It's similar to Roman and Ricky that Laura is not dealing with. This is the best version of Laura Horvath that we've ever seen. She's a defending rogue champion. She's a defending games champion. There's no question marks surrounding Laura Horvath, where there's a massive one surrounding Tia. And so I think that it's fair to, to pick Laura there. But I really think that Tia has just as good a chance to win this thing. Who took if second Tia, place at the Tia. games this year? Emma Lawson? Mm -hmm. and, and Ariel Lowen took third? Mm-hmm. Do you guys have a problem with Ariel Lowen being third? Do, do you do you do you can you it's get behind her being? I, I understand. Can you get behind her being the third fittest woman in the world? <clears throat> what did John say? He said it's the programming, and I understand that it's it's a different programming. But do you, are you guys also both happy with her placement at the games, or do you think that the programming was bad, or someone had a bad day? I mean, hey man, look, you, I don't know I what think that she won the, the she got third in the CrossFit game. She's okay. the third fittest woman in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Am okay. I going to okay. rank her third? Next year, probably not. And Brian, do you think she's the third fittest woman this year? Like, she's like, yeah, that was legit. Fuck. Legit programming, legit competition. Le that was legit. I've, I mean, I've spent a decent amount of time looking at her results from the CrossFit Games this year. And, you know, some of the things that she did best on are some of the things that demand the most fitness. Second place on the Pig Chipper. Fourth place on Helena. Third place on the Intervals. Third place on Muscle Up Logs. These are, like... You got to be fit. You got to have a well-balanced fitness. You have to have capacity and you have to be willing to hurt to do that well on that many. They're not one-off events. It's not like she's taking a top three finish on a bike ride and a run and a swim. And she's leveraging these specific skills in a handstand walk to fitness. No, this is an, a really impressive year at the games for her. She had nothing worse than 17th place, uh, which is, you know, 
it's that, that's very difficult to do. That's it's actually her performances this year were kind of comparable to Justin Medeiros's from two years ago when he won the CrossFit Games. Yeah, well earned and definitely deserved 100, 98, 95 points clear of fourth place Gabby McGow. Wow. And and Paige Powers wins Wadapalooza, then goes to the games. What did she take at the games? Tenth. And then you guys have her here at ninth. Wouldn't this be more? Why isn't she higher? Why don't you have her? You think you think Paige Powers is uh, Alex Kazan is better than Paige Powers? Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, by, by a margin. No shit. Yeah. And you think Paige Powers is better than Danielle Brandon? In uh, I, I think that's. I mean, that's. I would pick Danielle Brandon. But that's they're, close. They're, they're the same category. Yeah. Uh, can we scroll down a little bit? I want to see. Wow, Emily Rolf. Once again, she. I know what you're going to. You're going to say there too. It's the programming. You have Emily Rolf and Danny Spiegel. Would you say that those are kind of polar opposite athletes? I mean, yeah. as far. I mean, I know they're both well, very extremely well rounded. But as far as the group goes, uh, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I guess. And, and and what's gray mean? You have no chance in hell. Enjoy yourself. Drink a beer. <laughs> No, it's just uh, that's exactly what it means. That there's <laughs> whatever he's about to say. That's exactly what it means. He's going to be all political about it. Okay, let's go, Brian. Go ahead. Let's hear it. That means that we had the same group of athletes in the same part of the rankings, but not in the same order. So it's like we we've basically grouped those athletes together. They were red, and then I put in a gray because at the top of the women's field there was two groups of those that bled into each other. Gray, so I didn't want gray next to gray because then you couldn't distinguish them. So anyway, you you guys think Danny Spiegel? Um, uh, and, and I don't mean this negative. Someone thought um in the comments that this was a negative when I say, do you think she has, someone has a chip on their shoulder? You think she has a chip on her shoulder? I mean that like in a good way that she has a motivation to come out here and prove something. I see. I see. If you enter a composite competition, it's good that no, you don't think she has a chip on her shoulder. I don't, I don't think, think she's she cares like, about CrossFit. Re, I, see, I don't believe it. It's, it's too. I, maybe she tells herself that, but it's too hard to not care. It's too much work to not. It's too much work. It's hard for me to see what she puts out and then say that she lives and breathes CrossFit the way everybody else does. You mean what she presents uh, forward-facing on her Instagram, her social media? What she decides to promote, yeah. I think those two things can ex exist uh, exclusively from one another. I agree with Savan. Of course, of course they can, yeah. It's, it's too hard to be this good to not have uh, a, some other kind of desire or motivation to be out there, and I think that uh, we did see some, you know, some emotion from her this past season, and I think that she'll come out here with with a bit of something to prove. Yes. And where do you think she'll? Do you think she'll prove that on events she's traditionally been bad at, or do you think she'll just win the stuff she always wins and be bad at everything else? She better. She better do the the the, the first. Because thing I bet she does the exact same thing she does every single freaking year. What do you bet? I think you're right too, but but. I, I, yeah, I don't think she wants I mean, that. We picked her in the same spot. So well, if basically... you have a chip on your shoulder, you're working on your weaknesses. She's not working on her weaknesses. She wants to be as strong as she possibly can, and she's fit enough to make this stuff. She'll never get better than what she is. Uh, Jeff Giardina, I appreciate the color coding. I get it. Katie, with the uh, quick response, don't lie, Jeff. Uh, fair enough. Uh, I, I, I appreciate both. <laughs> appreciate both hey people you know having a chip on your shoulder can mean different things to different people and uh you know if that's what it means to you john then that is probably not what it means to her but for her it might be i'm going to go out there and prove that i can still hang with these girls on on certain workouts i can win other workouts and yeah there's going to be some that she's going to be towards the the back of the pack as is always the case yeah like i think you want to enter i think you want to enter a competition with a little chip on your shoulder L little the victory could be a little sweeter what victory um, is there going to be that's had? You, you know, I think you should. Event? Oh, you've always done that. Does, do, do you guys, does she win that? Do you guys know who wins the deadlift event out I of the think girls? she's in the running. Who's more likely to win the deadlift event, Spiegel or um, uh, 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 Chandler, Mike, Michael Chandler, Chandler Smith? Ooh, that's Michael a Chandler. I'm going to say Chandler's more likely. That's a heat. That's cue that one up for the heat one app. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good heat one question. Slow, slow promotion of the Heat One app. Uh, Audrey, um, does Brian have a chip on his shoulder? I got some. I got something to prove. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> who, who, who's the dark? Who's the dark horse in the females? Would, would you guys be surprised if Danielle Brandon breaks the top three? Yes. yes, yes. I mean, if she did that, Why? What, what? I, I would pick her to podium at the games. Why? She's a former collegiate athlete in a very, very difficult sport. She's crazy athletic. She's a powerhouse. She may be on the small side. Um, no, you don't think she's on the small side? She's a, she's small. <clears throat> She's five seven. You've been around. You've been around her, right? No, I haven't. What? No, I just seen. You pictures. didn't see her at the games this year. Did I see her at the games? Oh yeah, I did see her at the games. Should I forgot I went to the games. Look, um, if, if you, Stefan, did you read the articles that I wrote yeah, about? Yeah, she, she is on the small side. She looks like she's worked for every little bit of muscle she has in that girth on her body. Where some of these girls are just fucking brick shit houses. I think you're thinking of a different person. Danielle Brandon. <laughs> Pull up her Instagram. Let's do some gratuitous ogling. Anyway, you, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm surprised you guys would have her though. What, what's the highest you would put her? For did you read the Savan? Did you read the articles that I sent you? Of course I did. And All right. So then you'll know what the things that Daniel Brandon is good at, right? So tell me, what's the highest? What's the highest you'd put her for this competition? Seventh. Yeah. Can I go to my list? Can you, yeah. Can we see the list? Yeah, as soon as we're done ogling her a little bit. Whose dog is that in the back? And Look at that. I think the best that she can finish is sixth. And you have her, and both you guys have her at tenth. Yeah. So you think in 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 her CrossFit career, Gazan has passed her up? I think Alex Gazan is fitter than her. Yeah, I think so. Like the, I would say. For this competition, six through ten is a tier. That can what does be that divvied. mean? What does that mean? Like, uh, like it can be they six through ten can finish. The women in those spots can finish in any order of those spots. Like Danielle Brandon could finish sixth. She could finish tenth. I currently have Karen Freyova as sixth. She also could finish tenth. I think they're in a tier six through ten. Um, um, uh, Brian, are there any picks that you see of John's that are just completely just? outlandish you're like oh he must have messed up but i didn't want to tell him because i just wanted to talk shit well i mean i you know i'm a, as big a fan of karen freyova as anyone is and i thought and i think that from just watching her compete over the years when she competes with confidence she she's exceptionally what good and i think that the sixth place that he has her in is something that's attainable for her but we haven't seen her compete that way against the best fields in the world, Rogue and the game specifically, ever. She and so I actually, so I actually felt that eighth was a pretty generous ranking for her, and I was surprised when he had her higher than that. That's his, uh, not outlandish, but for you, that's his most like head scratching pick, but still not wild. I, th you I don't mean, think less of John. I don't. I just don't think that she's done. I don't think I've. Se I haven't seen anything from her to warrant placing her ahead of Carey or Lowen. How was your How was your interview with Emma Lawson? Oh, it was awesome, man! I was really it was her and Jack Barlow. I was really impressed with them. Um, I mean, they're young and they speak as if they're not. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm getting a call from mainland China. Hello. <laughs> God, I hope I didn't have to pay for that. Okay, uh, where were we, Karen? For uh, where? Uh, who are we talking about? Karen Freyova. Karen Freyova. Or, or my most head. No, no, Emma Lawson. You interviewed Emma Lawson. You interviewed Emma Lawson. Thank you. Sorry, that Chinese just threw me off. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, I mean, I was I was super impressed with her, her ability to communicate well and articulate herself. And I think that they, both of the, her and Jack, had the, some of the answers they gave to the questions we were asking them about were quite impressive for young, young uh, men and women, young athletes in the sport. As far as Rogue's concerned, I, other than Laura and Tia, she's the only other person in the field that I think has a chance to win the Rogue Invitational. I'd say it's a small chance, but I, you know, the fact that John has her second is not a mistake. Her resume is extremely positive. She did talk about the fact that last year heading into Rogue, she went through a um, a strength cycle to prepare for that, and it proved uh, you know to pay off well. I think she's done that again. Is the understanding that I had from talking to her, and I expect that she'll come in you know, very much prepared when, when we're looking at these athletes and we know that, um, I mean, Justin Cutler's talked about the fact that Alex Kazan wrist isn't hundred percent. We know what's going on with Tio. We don't, we have anything, uh, 
with, with in regards to Emma Lawson, other than the fact that training is right on track and she's ready to have another great performance. So I'm excited to see her in the field. I think she's a real deal, and I think she's going to be around for as long as she wants to be. Uh, Brian, that's – that's. Uh, I mean, uh, John, that's one of the strongest things we've heard yet in the show, uh, hour and 24 minutes in. He said of all the people he thinks that could win this, it's Laura, Tia, or Emma Lawson. Do you agree with that? Yeah. No, you 100%. don't. No, you don't. But why yeah. do I not? Because you have Tia in fucking fourth, <laughs> ding dong. Yeah, Tia is the biggest wild card there is to have. She's five months off of having a baby. She's Who do you have in third? 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 Alex Kazan. Do you think, think Alex Tia, can win it? You no, think Alex can win it? I think Tia has more of a shot okay. to okay. win it than Alex Kazan. Okay. okay. I don't uh, think, I think there is a wide range of possibility with Tia. And if Tia wins, then I am going to be on Hiller's side. Whether, about if she's juicing or not. I'm going to completely flip. My God. I think if Tia comes out here and destroys Rogue and beats everybody and beats Laura, then everybody should just stop until Tia retires. Like, we should wow. boycott like, like, wow. like boycott it until Tia retires because there's no point. If she could get pregnant and have a baby and then just destroy everybody within five months, then the rest of the CrossFit women are – Y'all are pathetic that you can't get closer to Tia. There's no way it shouldn't happen. And if it does, I'm going to be mad about it. And I'm going to, I'm going to completely be on Hiller's side. I look at Caleb. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, but I think there's more of a chance that Tia wins than Alex wins. All I'm thinking is, man, that's I think great Alex for this Kazan, station. I think Alex Kazan can, can beat Tia in this competition. I think uh, there is all there's a lot of good events for Alex in this event. Okay. So the three of you the three of you agree that the only three people who can win it are Tia, Laura, and Gazan. <laughs> or as they say in France, Gazan. <laughs> are you I mean are you intentionally getting it wrong? No. Tell me, tell me. Who we Emma, have? sorry, Emma, Emma, sorry, okay. Emma. Emma, Laura, and Tia. Yeah, and if and if it was not, if you told me that someone won the Rogue Invitational and it wasn't one of those three, then I would assume it was Gabrielle Miguel. Oh. I don't think there's any shot that that happens. I I I, th I think Gabby. I don't think we've seen the best of Gabby. I don't think Gabby's put it together yet. I think it's it's um there's just some something's just a, a missing piece somewhere. Just a couple, just a couple, maybe gears missing. Something's missing. You think she? I think she could win the game. I think she can win the games. I yeah, think she. How old is how is Gab, how old is Gabby Magawa? Twenty five or six. Yeah. You do you think she's Scott Panchik? Possibly. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Which there and look, there are other athletes like that too. There's just there are a group of athletes that just hit a ceiling at four or five, six, whatever it is, and that's there's nothing like. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's incredible. It's an incredible accomplishment. Um, but like I said earlier, this is a competition that lends itself extremely favor favorably to Gabby Magawa's skill sets. Uh, you know, I write about that, and I think that her performances there have basically suggested as much. And you know, I I think I, what I pick her fourth, and I think it's a very like a very likely placement for her. Uh, John, are you around tomorrow night? I have the podcast with Spin, and if it's oh on, yeah, that you, oh. as soon as that's over, or if yours is before, I'll be on. I'll be on yours. Okay, I I want to um I want to go over the events tomorrow. DM me if you want to be on the show tomorrow. I'm looking for people. Just kidding. Do not fucking do that. <laughs> Nobody do that. What if Laura have, DMs you? I already have too many friends. Laura, you can come on the show tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, gentlemen, uh, fantastic uh, picks. Um. And anything you'd like to say in closing? Or do you guys? Do, I think that this is a. I think we've reached a critical point in uh, Tia's career and in Laura's career. I think tomorrow uh, or this weekend we're going to see something amazing unfold. I think either way, it's not going to be done on Sunday. No matter what happens, this is just going to be the. Uh, uh, I don't know what did you call it. The prequel to the 2024 uh, CrossFit Games. What we're going to see between Laura and Tia. Any final thoughts from either of you? <clears throat> Nothing, John. I'll just say, you know, this is a 
that I think this is the deepest of uh, the rogue invitational fields have been. I think that the you know there's a there's some information out there about the programming, but there's a lot more that we're going to learn. I think that we're in store for some really cool events. I hope that the you know Katie mentioned the weather. I hope the weather cooperates. The athletes will always show up. Um, they're going to be putting on a show. It's going to be fun to watch. I hope that you guys can tune in. This is a, it's a it's a standalone. There's no other competition like this one. Um, you know, we've tried, we have collectively tried to provide you guys with as much information as we can about who's competing, where to look for them, ways to, you know, get involved, whether it's through the fantasy, through the live stream that Rogue's providing, this, the secondary stream that they're providing. There's a ton of ways to be actively involved in what's going on this weekend and support, you know, the, the competition, the showcase that they've uh, collected the best athletes in the world to be a part of. Uh, Nico Nunez, uh, Sevon. Are you buying the road? Are you buying the road Crocs? Listen, look at me. Do I look with someone with my fashion sense would ever be caught dead in Crocs? Yes. No. Thank you, Caleb. See you guys tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Do we have a guest tomorrow? Who do we have? Who do we have? Oh, tomorrow morning we have uh, Greg Glassman coming on at 7. Uh, he'll be here until 8.30. And then at 8.30, Rich Froning, ladies and gentlemen. Crazy morning. Uh, 7 to 8.30, Greg Glassman, 8.30 to, as long as we can keep him, uh, the greatest, Rich Froning. Talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.